hi friends welcome back to Shelby in the book club I'm Shelby Monet and in today's video we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of August and I feel like to be honest with you it wasn't even really the whole month it was like in these last two and a half weeks I <laughs> powered through a whole bunch of books um I was gonna say a whole bunch of reading but I powered through a whole bunch of books and some a few audiobooks as well um because I just got the spark again and I'm like so excited to be excited about books again after um so long so if you would like to hear all the things that I read in the month of August here you go so first let's talk about some audiobooks um I listened to and I will put the book on the screen for you um I listened to what is it called? I'm glad I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McGurdy, I believe her name is. I will put it up here. She is the young lady who was on Cat and Sam on Nickelodeon. If you are of a certain age or you have children of a certain age, this may sound familiar to you. Um so I know the book title is alarming. Um you would have to read the book to understand why mom was named it what she did I think the memoir is enlightening I think it is a story that needs to be told I don't think we realize all of the things that children actors go through um she also experienced a lot of abuse in her life and um I totally can understand why she titled her book the way that she did um I think it's a book worth reading it was a wild ride um, there, a lot of things happen to her. I think it also proves that abuse goes a lot further than physical abuse. I think we often leave out all of the other ways that people are abused mentally, emotionally, so on and so forth. Um, so that's something to think about as well when you listen to that I think all of the books that I read this month with the exception of the next one that I'm going to speak about all kind of centered around the same thing I feel like which is we need to treat children a lot better than what we treat them um so yes I read that I thought it was a very interesting listen I I listened to that um shameless plug showing the bookstore is on liberal fm so if you would like to purchase um audiobooks from Shelby in the bookstore to support me and my bookstore you can do that through liberal fm there is a link in the underneath of bar um so yeah that was a really good listen um the next thing that I listened to was man in the basement by Walter Mosley this was a book club pick do not ask me what month it was because I don't remember off the top of my head um, this is something that I'm reading again for the second time. I read this years ago. It is about a man named Charles who is a little down on his luck, don't really manage his money well, and then he gets an offer from this white man um to rent out his basement. And this man puts like a cage down there and it's this very weird story that is really, really good and it was interesting um reading it again because the first time that I read it was in high school um it creeped me out just as much um and I won't be letting anybody rent out my basement that's not it's no thank you no ma'am no sir no 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 um next on the list and the 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 other three books that are here I'm doing review videos so I'm not gonna go into too much detail this video will be super quick um but they all were so good so I've read another memoir and that is scenes from my life by Michael K Williams I feel like this is a must read book I feel like everybody should read this memoir for a lot of different reasons and I don't want to go into too much detail um but three things that I took away from this book Three things that I think will stick with me for a long time. One is self-acceptance. You are who you are. You are who you are. Good, bad, or indifferent, you are who you are. And you have the ability to change that. You, nobody else. 
you can't do it for anybody else you have to do it for yourself and if you slip up and you go backwards that's okay but you are who you are down to your core good or bad you are who you are okay and you have to accept that you have to be okay with it you two the children need us they need us bad they are in the outside they have access to all sorts of things that we did not have access to um um they are out there losing their friends to senseless gun violence and 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 gangs and jail and drugs and all of this stuff the babies the babies and and we need to help them but we can't help them until we are able to actually see them for who they are which is people and not just babies that don't know anything they are people right we need to see them as people we need to see them as the people that are one day going to save our lives when this country this planet goes to shit we're gonna need them but we can't do that until we face our own things we have to be able to approach them in a way that makes them feel genuinely safe with us we cannot lecture to them we cannot tell them we cannot judge them we cannot tell them how we think that we're they are wrong for how they decide to live their lives because we've never lived the lives that they live they need us but we can't do that until we face our own things we can't genuinely help them until we face our own things okay <laughs> but they need us the third thing is the idea of leaving the hood um why is that the end goal why are we leaving the things and the people that made us why are we not coming back to help them too why are we not reaching backwards where are we going why are we going there and why are we running away from what is our homes why are we doing that because then there are so many things that are going wrong that we don't even know about but we can't fix it if we're not there we can't we can't help if we're not there okay everybody should read this everybody should read this memoir i i've i've always been a proponent of memoirs i've always been a fan of them but i think over the years because i've read so many they all seem to sound the same like oh my life was shit and then my life wasn't shit anymore because of some sort of religion blase 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 blah and then i slipped up and then i found god i found my purpose again so on and so forth and this is not like that this is about a man who struggled with a lot of things and he wanted to prevent other people from struggling with those same sorts of things that he was struggling with. And the way that you do that is you reach back. That is an amazing story. I've always loved him. <laughs> um, I, I've always been a fan of his and my favorite thing in the world was to watch him dance because he would completely lose himself in dancing it was like you could see his energy like beaming off of his body i loved that man i i really really hope he rests in peace i really hope that he is on the other side watching over us with a smile knowing that he did the work that he intended to do um i love that man and after reading that i love it even more next we are going to talk about The Other Mother by Rachel M. Harper. When I tell you Miss Rachel put her foot in this book, when I tell you Miss Rachel put her foot in this book, okay, Miss Harper, I was DMing her like, I, I know you lying, her foot. <laughs> I was in her DMs like, Miss Lady. Now, why would you go ahead and do that? Why would you do that? Um, This is about a boy named Jimry who is going into college, and Jimry lost his father at a young age excuse me, in the college that he decides to go to turns out to be the school that his parents went to when they were in college and they met, so on and so forth. So he goes there because he wants to learn more about his father because he only knows but so much that his mom has told him. And um, it unravels this really deep family secret and it's told in sections basically of everybody involved so he finds out that his mom and like he finds out that his dad wasn't really a father to him but more a sperm donor he finds out that his mom was in a lesbian relationship he didn't even know that his mama was gay 
um we we learn about his grandfather his dad and his so it's complicated i will talk about it in the video but he finds out all of this stuff and it tells it from each different perspective of each person involved and i think this kind of ties back into what i said about scenes from my life where we need to treat, treat children better um i think the children have the right to know their origin stories um, no matter how uncomfortable it is for the parent, but also we have to understand that once upon a time, our parents were these children too. They were young. They made decisions that they thought were right. They still are making decisions that they think are right. That may not actually be right. And that is okay. I think this book at the core of this book, I think it's about giving people grace. <laughs> I think we don't give people enough grace. And I say that as someone that's learning to do that. I think we often look at our parents as people that are just supposed to take care of us, but they are so much more than that. But also we look at our parents, look at their children as these people that don't know anything because you're still learning and whatever, but we have feelings, we know things. We have questions, we are intellectuals, we think about things, we notice things, we, like, we, we ain't, we not dumb. I mean, maybe a little bit, but we not dumb. <laughs> um, so, it was interesting to see the different layers in this book. Like I said, there are a bunch of in-depth reviews coming, um, so we'll talk more about that then, but I absolutely love this. Um, I wasn't happy with the ending so I gave it a four stars like the ending was all right it was okay <laughs> it wasn't I feel like she went for the happy ending where we could have gotten an ending that wasn't happy because that's real life I feel like it was a real life story that got like a fairy tale ending and I don't know but it, it's a really good story it's thought-provoking it it shows it depicts family in a non-traditional way and it really sh drives home that family is what you make it and not um, just the people that took part in making you, right? So that was good. <sighs> Parish by Latoya Watkins. Whole bunch of trigger warnings. Um, I'm gonna talk about this in depth as well in a review video. Oh my goodness. When I tell uh, whole bunch of trigger warnings, okay? Incest, sexual assault, um, suicide, um, um, family trauma, all sorts of things. It is a heavy read. It is a heavy read. It is not a light story to carry at all. I don't mind books like this. I look for books like this because I feel like as black people, we have a lot of trauma. And I feel like as a people, we are often told to hide those traumas, right? Don't talk about it. Don't say nothing to nobody. It's nobody's business. Blah, blah, blah. Whole time, if we don't face our traumas, our children will have to face them and their children will have to face them and their children will have to face it until, until somebody is brave enough to heal, right? So if we don't tell these stories, I think we talk about representation so much. We talk about representation so much and we only meet it in the good lights. Oh, we want to see characters that look like us. We want to see us on on book covers we want to see us on magazines and in art and all of this stuff but representation y'all y'all be quick to pass up something like this because it it uncovers things in you that you don't really want to face but you got to face it because how are you ever really going to be able to appreciate the abundance and the joy that is out there for you if you can't get over these things and you are constantly living in the past I think, before I even tell you what the book is about, I think that stories like these are needed because people need to be 
People need to be seen. People need to be felt. They need to see themselves. There's someone out there holding on to some trauma that will never, (laughs) never be able to unpack it because they think they are crazy because no one has been able to say to them, I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry that happened to you. They, they don't know that it's happening to so many other people too, right? So these stars, stories are important. And when you talk about representation, you talk about these books too, even if they make you uncomfortable. Don't be no punk. Don't be no punk. So Parrish is about a woman named Helen Jean and her family, right? And it starts with her, some very tragic, traumatic beginnings for her. And how, because she did not want to face those things, they ended up being passed down to her family, to her children, to her grandchildren, so on and so forth. And there are so many things. There's so many things. There's so many things. It was interesting to me, the dynamic of, um, I was, she was abused and didn't heal it and then her children ended up being in similar situations and the things that she did to try to protect them that actually harmed them is so many layers to this book I'm probably going to read it again I'm probably going to read it again with all that I know about this book I'm probably going to read it again it is a five-star book I think it is something that everybody needs to read I think everybody needs to read Parish. there are things in here that we need to face Everybody needs to re-perish. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you feel like you don't have no trauma in your life. Everybody needs to re-perish. Because even if you haven't experienced the same kind of traumas that they've experienced in this book, you, unbeknownst to you, are facing people that have experienced this kind of trauma. And it'll probably explain to you why certain people act the way that they do. It... (sighs) This book was so good. It was hard. There was some, like, when I was finishing this up, there was a very detailed scene, and I just closed the book and put it down. I said, I'll face you tomorrow. I don't, I, no. But these characters are so real. They're so real. (laughs) They're so real. The writing. Really, I'm going to be honest with you. It's giving modern day the color purple. There I said it. It's given the modern day color purple. And if you could read the color purple, you could read this book. If you could read Toni Morrison, if you've read Beloved, you can read this book. There are so many classics that we have out there that do show our trauma. Like, I don't understand. I think we need to create a safe space for our trauma. I think we need to honor our trauma more. I think as a people, we are so dead set on hiding those things because they hurt but I think we need to create a space for them we do you are not alone you didn't experience it alone it it's, it, it doesn't make you who you are and it doesn't define you your trauma does not define you but we can't hide it forever these stories have to be told These stories have to be told. These stories have to be told. They have to be read. They have to be understood. This is going to be a classic. This is, this is, you mark my words. This is going to be a classic. I love this book so fucking much. It was so good. And I definitely will be reading it again. I don't know when, but I definitely will be reading this again. So that is, that rounds up all that I read for the month of August there will be links down below for all of the books that I mentioned here just like with every video um if you would like you can get any copies that you want from shelbyinthebookstore.com um and yeah if no one's told you today I love you you are kind you are smart you are important and I will talk to you in the next video friend if you made it this far put the book stack emoji in the comments (laughs) So I know that you made it to the end of the video. Um, And let me know what you're reading um, or what you read in the month of August. So, yeah. (laughs) Bye, friends.